Morning Connect Church, it's so awesome to be invited into your lounge rooms or living rooms or wherever you're watching this today. I feel really privileged to be able to bring the word to you today. Today we're talking about the second part of the faith series. So Will started last week and he used the scripture in Matthew 17, 17, which talks about a faithless and perverse generation. And so Will entitled his message, What Not Faith Is. And so he talked about faithlessness and how we were to be full of faith and what happened when we were faithless. But today, I'm actually going to be talking about what faith is. So Will did what not faith is, and I'm talking today about what faith is. And of course, the famous chapter in the Bible on faith is from Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm just reading verse 1 where it says, Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not yet seen. And so we understand, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I really should have turned my phone off. Like that is from, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, yeah, anyway, as you can tell, stand by your man. So that was my husband. I thought he knew that I was taping, but anyway, sorry about that, guys. Um, but yes, what we're doing is today talking about what faith is. And so Hi. in the... Where have you been? I've been ringing you. What's going on? You always answer me. Yes, and that is true, folks. And I guess why I have different ringtones on my phone is because... Well, you heard me. Yes, I, well, the, these people are a little bit more important than you today, but... Why I have different ringtones on my phone is so that when somebody important rings me... Like me. Yes, like my husband, I actually know to answer it straight away. So wherever I am usually, whatever I'm doing... Even recording. Even recording. When Stand By Your Man comes on, I always answer it because it's a very important relationship for me. That's right. I don't feel like you're standing by me today at all. I'm always by you. Oh, that's nice. You just take my phone so it doesn't. But while you're here, hon, okay. I'd actually like, I was going to tell the folks about this mm-hmm. because in I'm also using a scripture here in Romans 10, 17 that says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then also in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. So just take your glasses off there for a moment. Let's tie this on. You tie it on. And I just want to use this as an illustration about what we're talking, what faith is. It says it is the evidence of things hoped for, things not yet seen. And yet we are creatures that use our sight so much. It's very becoming on you, but it's got to go over your eyes, hun. I can't see. Yes, he can't see. So I want to give you this picture. As we were talking about hearing, and that's why I had that ringtone, because when I hear my husband's ringtone, stand by your man. You answer me. I answer him. But I want to give you this illustration, that as we go through life, I want you to imagine that there are all these mouse traps around the place. And truly, that's what life can become. It's okay. They're there. But... There are so many traps in life that come to trip us up, to snap at us and all these sorts of things. I want to talk to you about the relationship that we have with God, understanding that if we listen to the voice of God, we will be able to navigate things far better. And that's what it says. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you imagine this, that if we had a big area here and it was full of mouse traps. And Rob is someone walking through life. But the thing is that each and every one of us have the opportunity for God to stand beside us, for us to listen to God's voice. And the scriptures tell us that the Father or God will never leave us or forsake us. So if we had this room full of mousetraps and I started walking with Rob and I'm saying, okay, let's take a couple of steps forward, stop. Let's just shuffle over to the left because there is another mousetrap there. And let's keep going forward now. No, stop. 
We actually need to back up a bit because I don't want you to step in that other mousetrap. Now, if you understand and you're watching, Rob is listening to my voice. But I want to tell you, unfortunately, life isn't that easy. There will be voices from all around that are yelling out to him saying, no, don't trust her, don't do what she's saying, or more importantly, don't believe in God. What are you putting your faith and trust in God for? There's no real God. And so he will have all of those voices. And not only do those voices come against him, but what about this? The voice in his own head. And often the voices that we speak to ourselves are the worst voices ever. I can't do this. This is too hard. I'm going to fall. I'm not going forward in case I step on a mousetrap. I'm going to stay put where I am. I'm not going to navigate life. I'm just staying stuck where I am. But I want to challenge each and every one of us. There is a God who loves us, who cares for us who wants to walk every step of the way, who doesn't want us stuck in one place. He wants to be able to take us so that we can reach our full potential. One of our values here at Connect Church is to understand that God has a call for each and every one of us. And we want to be able to live out our God-designed influence that we can have over people. Thanks, hon. That's probably enough for you today. You write to... And if you take my phone with yep, you, so that it, and if you wouldn't mind not ringing again. Okay, Thanks. Bye. Love you, darling. So that's just a little, little illustration there. And on my phone, I have all, I've got about 12 different ringtones. I've got my two daughters. They've got different ringtones. I've got my son. It says, Mom, Mom, where are you? I'm calling you. I've got my mother's ringtone that says, Your mum is calling you. Why? Because these people are important to me. And it's not just any old voice coming in, but I listen for the ringtone to decide if I'm going to answer straight away. So let's just go through those two scriptures again. In Romans 10, 17, it says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And I want to give an illustration to me, I've used this one for many years, of what faith is. And there's two trapeze artists, and you'll be able to see the picture there. And one, as we've, if you've been to the circus or been anywhere where you see trapeze artists, there comes that moment when if you're on the swing, you have to let go and trust that the other person is going to catch you. And that letting go, that moment when you are actually free-falling through the air, you've got to let go of your swing before you can grab the hands of the person who is going to hold you, that's the faith element. While you are on your swing, you don't need faith because you know that that will support you, that you've got it and that you're well and truly safe. And you can see that the person there in front of you is going to catch you. You have to put your faith in that person. But there comes that stage when you must let go of the swing to go and be caught by the person in front of you. You know, if you tried to hold onto the swing and grab the person, it would not work. You would probably pull that person and you'd be stretched or whatever. The faith element is when you've heard something and you're putting your faith, and for us, it is putting our faith in God, a God who loves us so unconditionally, a God who wants us to feel, to see the fulfillment in our lives, a God who has a purpose and plan for each and every one of us. And yet so often, because of fear, because of words, because we are a people who want to see what lays ahead and we want to know what is happening, so often we don't step out in faith. That we, un- that we come to that place of saying, no, I'd rather stay in the what I know than step into the unknown. But I want to challenge each and every one of us. Faith is believing in the Father is understanding that when he whispers in my ear that he has the best for me. And that's why sometimes 
it talks about faith that we don't want to see things because if I could see what God has up ahead for me, I guarantee many times I would have balked. Many times I would have come to the stage of thinking, I'm not heading there. But because I didn't know what was up ahead, because I trusted my father and I walked through it with him, I've had the most amazing life. Most of you know that only three and a half years ago, we left Adelaide where we'd been for 33 years. And the day that we drove out of Adelaide, we didn't really know what laid ahead. All we knew was that we had a word from God to return to Queensland to come care for my mum. We didn't know what it was going to look like. We didn't know what the journey held. We didn't know where we were going to live. And particularly Rob is someone who likes his security, doesn't like change. I'm always up for a bit of an adventure, but he likes to know where he's going, what's going to happen, how is life going to unfold. But both of us have so learnt to trust the voice of God, to be obedient to what he is telling us. And I want to just continue to say the life of faith is one of the most exciting lives that you could ever live. Is it easy? Heck no. But the Father always is with us and he prepares us for every part of the journey. I want you to think of a man walking through a rainforest And as he's walking along, he hears this croaking and carrying on and he looks down and there under a rock is a frog. And the rock is actually bigger than the frog. And so the frog is stuck there and he is pushing and he is doing and grunting and giving it everything that he can to get that rock off him. But there's no way known that he'd be able to lift that rock And so the man looks down and he just stoops down, picks the rock up and tosses it away and the frog is free to go. And the frog cries out, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. Was it a miracle? Yes, definitely for the frog. Was it a miracle for the man? No, because the man was of a different nature and his nature was the strength and the ability the love and the care, and he was able to just pick that rock up and release the frog. And that's who our God is, that he loves us so much and he wants us to be free. And so often we, you know, we're grunting and we're stuck under things and I'm sure God is speaking to us and saying, hey, there could be a different way or let's do this or maybe you've never even asked God into your life. And you might be stuck under that rock and thinking my life just isn't going where I'm wanting it to go. Well, I'm here to tell you today, there is a God who loves us so much and he does want to lift that rock from you. He wants you to have the freedom. He wants you to live the life that he's called for you. And so as you're watching this, if you're one of those people, I want you to contemplate on that and put Perhaps today is your day to say, yes, Father, I've had enough of being stuck under a rock. I'm over this and I'm allowing you to lift the rock so that I might start to walk in freedom. Today I want to talk a little bit about the man Elisha. And it starts out in 1 Kings and, oh, I just lost my bookmark. 1 Kings chapter 19, I was so prepared and it just slipped out like that. 1 Kings chapter 19 and I'm reading verses 19 to 21. Just listen as I read this. So he departed from there, so he is Elijah. So it says, so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you again. And he said to them, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned turned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen 
and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and served him. Here is a man who knew what it was to walk in faith. And not only that, because it says, as Elijah passed by him, he threw his cloak on him, which in that setting meant, like, come and be a disciple of mine or come and be trained with me. And Elisha jumped at the chance. And not only that, but it says here, then he burnt the plow, boiled the oxen. Why? Because he was making sure there was no going back. In other words, he burnt his safety net. He said, this man I am going to follow. He represents God and I'm going to live my life following him. But he made that decision to burn everything that he knew, said goodbye to his family and followed Elijah. And that's what faith is. It is, like I said, on that trapeze, it is letting go of that swing. And if you've seen it, the moment that you let go, that swing goes back. It's not like you get in midair and think, oh my goodness, no, let me go back to the swing because the swing has already gone back. There comes a place where we say, Father, I'm listening to your voice and I'm stepping out in faith. I'm going forward here and I refuse to have a safety net back behind me. And the story, if you read in 2 Kings, the first 13 chapters are mainly about Elisha. And apart from Jesus, there was no other man in the Bible that performed as many miracles as Elisha did. So Elisha was, he healed the, um, healed Naaman of his leprosy. He made, he got the floating axe head. He fed a hundred men with the 20 loaves of barley. He purifies a pot of stew. He raised the Shunanites woman's son from the dead. There are so many things that Elisha did. He sold his life out. He walked in faith. He wasn't looking back, but he continued to listen to the Father's voice. He listened to God's voice. And in listening, then he was obedient to do it. Because I'd also like to challenge us that many times we can hear what God is saying, but are we obedient to it? When sometimes you've heard the voice of God, And he says, come on, let's go here, let's do this. And we think, "Uh, not sure about that. I don't think that would work out for me. And those voices in our own head start to reason and we can reason ourselves out of anything. Or it could be other voices. I know that um, even when we talked about leaving, there were people saying, why would you want to do that? You've sown here, you've got family here. As all of you know, that we've left four kids and their partners and grandkids behind. But, you know, reasoning can seem so against what God is asking us to do. Voices can come, our own voices, like where are we going? What are we doing? But we see the story of Elisha and he sold out to God and the manifestation of the miracles that he was able to do was amazing because he was a man that walked with God. And let me read towards the end of his life. Again, this is in 2 Kings and I'm reading verses 20 and 21. And so it says, 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 20, Then Elisha died, and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of that year. And so it was that as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, He revived and stood on his feet. What a story. Even in death, Elisha's life was able to bring life to a dead man. I would encourage you to have a look in, like I said, in 2 Kings, the first 13 chapters, read. And as you read, allow the spirit to come inside that Father Give us the faith of Elisha. Give us the faith of this man who was able to hear his God and act upon it. 
You know, there is the story of an African impala, which is a great big animal, and it can jump up three metres high and nine metres wide. And yet they're able to keep an African impala inside a one metre enclosure in a zoo with just a small um, barrier around. Why? Because why doesn't the impala just jump up over the thing? Because it can jump three metres high. The fact is the African impala will never jump somewhere unless he can see where his feet are landing. So because of that, the African impala, who is made to do great things, go great places, jump great distances, it can be kept in a one-metre pen with just a low barrier. Folks, how often, because of our lack of faith, do you think that we are kept hemmed in by life? How often do you think that the enemy feeds us lies and says, you can't do that, you never be able to do that, you weren't made to do that, you'll never, you haven't got the education for it, you haven't got all these things. And so the enemy keeps us in, imprisoned in this tiny little place when God has called us for greatness, when God has said, you haven't yet seen what I can do with a life sold out to me. Folk, don't be like that. Let's allow the voice of God to speak to us, that he would come and that we would be obedient to what he has asked us to do. You know, in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I actually have here a basket of gloves. Now, living in South Australia for so long, and we actually did five weeks in Europe, a winter Europe once. So we have, you name it, we've got gloves, like, you know, summer gloves, winter gloves, um, ski gloves, all of these things. We have got so many pairs of gloves. And the these gloves are made out of different materials. They've got different usage. But the one thing that all of these gloves have in common is unless they have a hand in them, they are useless. It doesn't matter how pretty they look, how warm they will. Like if those gloves are sitting there and I'm sitting here with my hands freezing, it's not going to help me at all. And when we talk about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that gives me the picture of the God inside of me, that literally without my father, I'm just a glove. It may look pretty, it may be a nice decoration, but it really has no purpose. But the God inside of me is able to do amazing things. And now this glove can go anywhere because while this glove is on the table without a hand inside of it, it will stay on this table. It won't go anywhere. But I'm telling you, the God inside of me can take this glove anywhere, can cause it to do anything. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as we come to the close today, I want us to be challenged to say, God, don't leave me where I am. Let me be known as a person of faith. And faith is going in steps. When Elisha was first called by Elijah, he mirrored Elijah and he stayed with Elijah to the very end so that he could see Elijah taken away. And then he received a double mantle or a double portion of what Elijah had had upon his life. That was his request. And so wherever you are in your faith journey, I would ask that push yourself further. Understand that God wants to speak to us. He has a call and a purpose for each and every one of us. And let's allow that faith to rise up inside of us. You know, faith isn't dependent upon the circumstances. I can have the most horrific circumstances happening around me, but it's dependent upon the size of my God. And my God is a big God. And my God is for me. Like the Bible says, if God is for me, who can be against me? So let's come. Let's challenge ourselves as we go through the rest of this series. 
faith. Let's make a commitment that, Father, I don't want to stay where I am in my faith journey. I want to step out closer to you. I want to be able to hear you, Father. And in the midst of that, like I said earlier, maybe you're a bit like that frog under the rock, that you're stuck where you are. Maybe you have been out in freedom and maybe you've walked with God at one stage but you've been hurt, disappointed, walked away and you've gone and hidden back under that rock. I want to tell you it's no fun under the rock. So if that's you today and you think, you know what, I refuse to be kept under the rock. I want God to come into my life. I want to yield my life because for God to lift that rock off you is so easy because that's his nature. But he won't do it unless you ask him to. And so if you want to come to the place of asking God into your heart, How about, wherever you are, that you just say this prayer with me now. Let's just close our eyes. Father, I thank you for your love for me. I thank you that you are a God who has a purpose and a plan for me. And Father, I'm over being under this rock. I'm over living in my sinful life. And I ask today, Father, that you would forgive me for the sins, that you would take that rock from my life, that I might walk in freedom. Father, come and be Lord of my life. Amen. If you've prayed that for the first time today, we would love to hear from you and you'll find on your screen a phone number or an email but let us know how you're going. For others of us, I would encourage you and I would challenge you, read 2 Kings this week and ask God that he would extend our faith, that he would take us on this journey with him and we would see his potential fulfilled in our lives. Great being with you this morning. Love you lots. Bye.